to the pay for the grass is always green. I don't do no labels, I call it how I see it. Uh. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of a No Label Convo. Here are my boy Nell. Yo. Shouts out to everybody that's been subscribing on YouTube as normal, liking on Instagram, sharing on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter at No Label the Pod, Facebook, No Label the Podcast. Nell, go ahead and get to the sponsor. Word. Shout out to our sponsor. Shout out to Guapcoin. Guapcoin. Cryptocurrency for the culture. Tap in, tap in. Uh, today, we're sitting down with arguably the best band group collective in. Western New York. I'll say all of New York for right now. Okay. So <laughs> they've been taking the city by storm. They've done shut down town ballroom, rec room, and, and they've been making hella noise. So today we have free music party. How y'all boys feeling? Yes, yeah. sir. Good, good, good. Good, good. good to be Appreciate here. Appreciate y'all boys pulling up, man. Word, word. Good to be back. Thanks. Yeah, so, good to be back. Yeah, <laughs> right, Kev was yeah. one of our first guests. That's a fact. Yeah. He came back with the crew. <laughs> mm-hmm. brought, brought the whole crew. So we got Kevin Spears, and go, if we want to go to each person and just like y'all roll in the music party. We'll start with you, Kev. Yeah, so um, I'm a producer mainly, but I uh, kind of do a little bit of everything. Some of the creative direction, um, arrangements. Uh, I play in the band and I sing a little bit, so. We all kind of have our hands in, in everything, but when we started out, it was uh, production. That's that's like my, my shit. So. Copy. Um, so I'm Enrique, um, the DJ, aka DJ Apollo. Um, so basically, I'm the DJ of the group. Uh, I produce now as well. Not as much back for this recent project that we just dropped, but but uh, definitely we'll see more of me in. Hear more of me, I would say. Uh, Max, no nickname. And uh, I just co-manage with, with Kaylin. I also do some of their uh, visuals, just so you taking pictures. I did the town ballroom promo, you saw that. Uh, and I shot their uh, uh, town ballroom recap as well. I'm Joe, uh, also Luno J, producer name. Um, produce, play in the band. Mix, master, whatever, whatever we need. I'm uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm uh, Eddie Blanco. I rap, sing, and yeah, that's what I do. Uh, I'm Alex Live. Uh, I am mostly a vocal artist, but I also have a hand in our merch. Uh, I design a lot of it and also print it. They got me this joint right here. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't even peep you out that on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I'm Kay. I am the general manager and do most of the other background business of the group. Also, background dancer. <laughs> yeah, I might bust a move every now and then. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we're gonna go around the table. When did when did the free music party start becoming an idea? And an should, should I answer that? Yeah, yeah so go ahead. Uh, so yeah, basically, I created it with our old co-founder who's now separated from the group, but that's still the homie, um, Xavier Flywalker. We went under the name Civil, which had hella members, but we were doing shows back then. If you knew about it, you knew about it. From there, it kind of decreased to us core seven, and then we picked up Joe, which then just formed us into the free music party that you guys know today. And... Uh, over two, three years, we kind of just cultivated that sound and that energy to this point now. So those who haven't heard y'all, like, who would y'all, like, what what kind of sound would you compare it to? (laughs) It's morphed a lot, I'd say, from the outside looking in. You know, we get the internet a lot. (laughs) That's valid, that is valid. It does make sense. But th- somebody has told us that we do sound a little bit like nerd from back in the day, and I think that's something. I- I'll take that one. <laughs> I'm going to take that one because I like that one. <laughs> but I don't know. It's just a lot. It's the people, like, they, they mostly it's either Brockhampton or, like, 
Tyler see that, for the yeah. main things. But, you know. Yeah, I'd say sonically we, we jump around a lot. Yeah, for sure. We it's have hard to nail we have down. a lot of influences, um, and I think that's kind of what has like become our strength is that we have something for everybody. Like if you yeah. come to our shows, we you know we do R and B, we do hip hop. It's influenced by the town too, by like the Buffalo sound, the soul mm -hmm. samples, and and that hip hop like boom bap feel. But also like we mix punk into the shows. We do pop. We do funk. It's like it's pretty much. Free music. Any, anything, yeah, yeah it's free, free, music. free music. So it's that idea of, of free expression, free music. It's just whatever we're feeling, you know what I mean? Whatever like speaks to us pretty much. So. I think that's that's like what made me gravitate towards y'all and just like under like understand because shit, we, we no label. Like we don't we don't want to be putting no bots and no labels, none of that shit. So yeah. I, I fully understand it's like the fact that you wrap that around your brand is 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 smart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so when did y'all start yeah. actually going by the name Free Music Party? Because you said before it was civil. 2019. So was it, was it like a show where y'all like announced we're Free Music Party or like you put out a single where like this is our I think we name. literally just like switched over all of our social yeah, media. Yeah, yeah, yeah we like, like wiped the Instagram and like, oh, yeah, like, like, like civil was like 12 or 15 people. So after we <laughs> shaved that down, yeah. We, and we just rebranded. And so when we had all these like preliminary meetings about the rebrand of where we want to move, that's when we changed the Free Music Party. We had, we had dancers at Civil, we had <laughs> other producers, we had a, a different DJ, I'm pretty sure. Um, so the rebrand had to come after you trim the hurdle. Yeah. That's yeah. what's important, you gotta narrow your focus. Okay. Cut the fat. Cut the fat. Yeah, it was, um, I think it was 2018 actually. I think it was. Yeah. It um, must have been. I think yeah, that was Headley House. Yeah, so we we had a meeting and went through a lot of names. <laughs> yeah. A lot of names. Um, what were some of the other names? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanna know. Uh, uh, house best, party. Best Renegade, party. Renegade, yeah. Renegade House Party. Renegade House Party. Renegade house party. House party. Bad, bad Habits. Yeah. Bad, habit. oh, bad Habits was a contender. That was that was that was a contender. Bad Habits was it was in like Close second, I think. If we got to go through another rebrand process, yeah, that'll, yeah. Be, that'll be our <laughs> next. I hope not. I hope not. Yeah, we, <laughs> we also talked about like enveloping the shed and just being like the shed. Mm -hmm. Right. We did oh, talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the shed, for those who don't know, is uh, our studio mm -hmm. and kind of our creative space. So. Yeah, and it was I, when I first seen the, the shed, I was like, yo, it reminded me of uh, the shack and how that mm -hmm. and how they they had the summer on like. Multiple summers on Smash. Oh, yeah. did, did they influence you at all with getting that creative hub in that space? Um, the shed actually is inspired because we used to smoke in the <laughs> back of my mom's house, like in the shed. <laughs> so like that's we just grew up in it, and like that just became it. Yeah, so, we would go yeah. five blunts deep. <laughs> yeah. Like had two. His older brother had like two bonds. We time bombed the things after. Bro, we was out here like <laughs> two years no. old. Like yeah. that shit, was the, like, the creativity. <laughs> but no, it's really. I really like that. Is one of the main reasons why I'm into music today is from that shed because we just literally used to sit there and dissect music mm -hmm. while we were smoking in that shed. So it means everything to me for that. Did, when, like, when did everybody like start meeting each other? Like, like us three have known each other since like pre K. Pre K, yeah. Um, okay. mm -hmm. And then Kevin came in high school. High school. Max came in like eighth, eighth grade. grade. Um, and then I picked Eddie up in the like creation of Civil. Like he was literally like the first person. I was like 2016, I mean, yeah, 2015, like, right around there. And then. Joe met okay. Kevin in college, yeah. so he was the yeah. last Pittsburgh. edition. So I, there's, there's a bunch of like cross yeah. paths too. So like Enrique and I met in, he was in sixth grade, I was in seventh grade, we went to middle school together. I sort of knew Max like just through other people Mutuals. in middle school. Yeah. I think Kay, I, I used to play Xbox with occasionally yeah. in like so. seventh grade. Same with Steven. Me, Steven, and Enrique, and, and a bunch of homies used to like dance at the yeah, at the yeah. 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 we would like hit the jerk. They don't know about the movement, and that was like what <laughs> made us friends, basically. And then Steven and I went to high school together. Oh, Alex Live, sorry, <laughs> 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 I'm constantly doing that. Alex Live here. 
Um, we we never, came close bro. in high school. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. You Listen, bro. I, <laughs> I know, right? I every, every time I'm like, yeah, I went to Kenesha's, they're like, what? <laughs> yeah, bro. I will never forget the day I saw Kevin in his mom's room. Because I've known him, like, you know, it was just me and him chilling for, like, years. And then the day I saw him come in, I was like, so it was like a, a crossover. It was. Yeah, it was, it was like warm worlds cool. collide. Yeah, it was that's awesome. Fine. That's fine. But it needed to happen. So, y'all, y'all do R and B, rap, a little bit of mix, a little bit of everything. Are like just the two main lyricists? Is it just Eddie and Alex? Are y'all just, is it typically just y'all? Uh, yeah, and then we like bring Kevin in. Yeah. I was and trying to see if I could get any bars from Enrique. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Enrique's got surprised. a couple songs in the back burner that's, <laughs> that's going to be dropping soon. <laughs> on a serious note, I do have two songs that I rap on. Mm-hmm. It's probably yeah, that's some shit. Don't forget about that. You're dropping them? Chips. Is it on a serious note? On a serious note, maybe. When the maybe. time is right. When the time is yeah. right. It's got to be right. Yeah. It's got to be right. Okay. Just keep going. So y'all say y'all like started in the shed, like really dissecting music, listening to music, how y'all like formed y'all bond. What type of shit were y'all like listening to back then? Chance. Chance the rap. That's a rapper to me. Yes, I remember. Extremely formative. I found Chance through that piff and like- It was there. It was there. It was every single time. That's how I got it. And like, it was like, just literally, that's how I always would find music was just that piff, like Spinrilla. Uh, there was right, another mixtape mix apps. Mm-hmm. Like I would just be on there for hours searching, and I'm like, I was like, as soon as like I saw the promo for, it, I was like, you know what, it's a cool cover. I'm gonna go look, and then like we just sit there, listen to Chance, and that's where I found like Vic Mensa, who was Alex Wiley, whoever was in Save Money, who like yeah, that's Chicago, like, that whole Chicago, that whole Chicago scene. Whole, exactly, man. Like, influential. Um, also like Tyler, of course. Tyler, I'm, I'm heavy in general, Tyler. Was, like the OF tapes. Oh and, yes. Um, Talking uh, Tron Cat, Tyler. You feel yes. me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you know. Uh, would have been canceled. <laughs> would have been canceled, the Tyler. VHS and, um, Tyler. You know. I'll say a lot of Joy Badass, too, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, 1999 was heavy. So we, we were kind of like skate kids, you know. We kind of like mm-hmm. some of the more alternative stuff or like indie rap. Gotcha. And, but, and then, you know, you had your Kanye's and Lil Wayne mm-hmm. and um, ASAP. A- oh yeah, ASAP. Sure. ASAP, 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 right. ASAP, ASAP, ASAP was ASAP. huge. Like live love ASAP. Like that era was like yeah. everything, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, you know, Shaq, did y'all, did y'all, was it just weed or was y'all fucking with the psychedelics too? Nah, nah we, were, we were too young for that at that point. Nah. We were like 14. Yeah. <laughs> we was crazy enough. We would sit there. We yeah, we'd, 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 we'd walk back mind. into my mom's house and we'd be like, shh. Like everybody had to be quiet. Like that. Nah. <laughs> yeah, like, we making toast in the straight oven. in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ripping up the meanest grilled cheese. Oh, meanest yeah. grilled cheese, man. Trying Some, so hard to be quiet. Yeah. Sometimes right. I would just like say fuck it, and we just start making fries. Yeah. Like, we just from say, scratch. We would just be sitting here yeah. like, like, potatoes up, <laughs> putting them shits in the grease. I'm like, yeah. We were, we were <laughs> yeah, chefing see. a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's fine. So when when did uh. Free, like, when do you guys feel like free music probably really started hitting their stride? Mm. Like, really started making noise in the town. So. Mm. For me, it was Nietzsche's in. Was that pretty much friends? last year? No, it was. Say, would you say Nietzsche's with the first merch run? Or you? I, yeah, I would say our mm. first headlining show at Nietzsche's yes. was, I think, yes. last July. Yeah. And you know, we we look out and there's like 300 people in there. And Nietzsche's, for, for those that don't know, is it, you know, it's more or less a dive bar. They have yeah. music seven days a week. Like, there's not, they're not used to having crowds like that. It's pretty mm-hmm. compared to this studio, One of the really deepest like, dives. Yeah, it's pretty like, much Nietzsche's right there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, just one long it. look. Like, You'd be hard pressed to find uh, more than 20 people in there mm-hmm. on, on a weekend. So it's like packing that out to the back and like hearing how loud that crowd was, was like, that was like the first time that I like looked around and we, our live show was like really like stepping up to another level. Word. That night I was like, yeah, like 
<laughs> it's about yeah, time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, what was the first night? Like we, I heard people saying "Hold Me Down." Like with the lyrics coming back, that was yeah. the first summer. That shit. People, like, they knew the words. They knew the words, which was like I noticed. Like I was really impressed with like every time y'all threw an event. Like it was, it would be back. And, like I'm like, yo, okay, like this shit is this shit is dope. This is a thing. Yeah. And then especially when I saw y'all at the town ballroom, I was like, oh shit. Like mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, because. Most local band, like local artists and stuff, don't get those venues. So it was like, how was that feeling of y'all being at the town ballroom and killing the show there? Man, like, it's sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah. Like we, you know, we went from playing basements mm -hmm. and and, and stamps. tiny stamps, yeah. stamps and, and milkies with nobody, one person in it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's that's where where we started. So to do that with all of us as close as we are, it was like an amazing feeling. Seriously, it was it was something else. To to look out and see that that like sea of people out there. Word. Especially like you said in a venue that not a lot of people they don't let nobody like, it's, it's nah. hard to get in there. So that's a fact. It, it was a great feeling for sure. Hell yeah. And y'all about to do it again. Yeah. 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 How were y'all able to build such like a core fan base to where people like actually wanted to see y'all perform like at a town ballroom? I think it's a mix of it being like seven of us, like just having those individual relationships and then like coming together and like just like stacking that up to the point where it's like, all right, I fuck with Alex Live, now I fuck with Eddie, now I fuck with FMP. Mm -hmm. They make good music, let me bring my friends. And I think that just kind of like kept building to the point where now you do get those like shows. I don't know about you guys, is that what you think? The music um, like speaks for itself in yeah. a lot of ways. Mostly, it's like I said. Mostly, <laughs> <laughs> mostly, I think like personally that you know the the fact that we hammered in that we want to keep everything like natural, and so like it's see you could see it through the music, you can see it through our promo that mm -hmm. like it's you know it's just us having fun. And I feel like people gravitate towards that. Mm. Well, also you have to understand that. You know, not to beat a dead horse, but I'm gonna beat this horse until it's dead. <laughs> the music scene in Buffalo up until recently, it's challenging to get consistent shows. So when he's talking about doing basement shows and doing stamps and milkies, from a management perspective, that wasn't, that's not like we're doing now where there's a run of shows. I mean, those could have been months apart. Yeah. And as the time in between all those shows, these guys are connecting with the greater Buffalo music scene where Kevin's working with other artists and just networking and friendships in general. So as that music scene grew, the infrastructure grew where bars and clubs, it was in their best interest to open up their venues to local shows. They, they need to generate revenue, especially in times like this where they've all been closed for two years. Okay. So now that the Buffalo music scene infrastructure is stronger, like stronger than it's ever been, it's this is the time. This is now we get that run of shows a lot easier. I mean, Tal Town Ballroom never had their pen in stage, and it was not possible to get in there until recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of the right ingredients at the right time. And we were the first people on that stage. I want to put that on record. Yeah. We, were, <laughs> we christened that stage. That's a fact. On the record. On the record. So uh, tell us about your project, uh, Some, Some, Some. <laughs> some, 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 some. Uh, just came together. <laughs> um, yeah, it just was, magically came. Uh, yeah, no, we just, just kind of threw it together. It you was know? like yeah, weirdly yeah, you know. kind of magical. Yeah, we had um, moved into a house together, um, and just it was like us kind of stumbling our way to to a new sound. Like we, it was our first time sitting down and like really collaborating mm. together like that and we were just fucking around basically like just smoking and drinking and chilling in our studio like it was it was like a, a dream for all of us kind of have mm. our own space and like build our own little studio where we could just kind of shut the rest of the world out and just make art right. and we wrote the whole like each song pretty much i think one of the craziest things about this project is that each song was pretty much entirely made in one night. So it was like, mm, that's fire. Like we would just sit down and whatever the vibe was that night, that entire song would, would just like naturally kind of be born mm -hmm. and be done within a few hours. Like I would go in and start cooking a beat. They would start writing. Everyone would like throw in their input. 
And like just whatever the energy was in the room that night became that song. And that was like the whole project. It was it was done in a, a couple months pretty much just with of like within us moving there just a couple months we we had a whole project which was super dope. Mm -hmm. That's fire. I think it's uh it was just like a really nice capture of like that time spent there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it. That's dope. Do you have any other music? Uh, like I was just like we. we Are we about to get into the mushroom talk? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I was get into that. Cause I know you want to get into that. <laughs> I was kicking it. I was kicking it with y'all boys the other day, and we was talking shit, and it was like, uh, motherfuckers be hating on anime. Like my man got the ill ass shirt right exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> Why motherfuckers be hating on anime? They think it's nerdy. Yeah. They don't I think understand it's a it. Stigma of like, you know, back in the high school. You know, it's, I feel like people are like, oh, yeah, like, nerds only watch it. But I was sitting there in high school, like, yo, like, put me on. Like, Man, I knew, like, knew gangsters that watch Dragon Ball Z, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people don't count Dragon Ball Z as anime. I do, I, I, a lot of people I do don't. to a certain extent. They, they say like, it kind of starts out like Naruto or One Piece or that type of stuff. Man. From I've people I've met, talked to. I've from, like, that hard anime people I've talked to. I feel like I haven't met people that actually say that. I feel like I just know people that say that some people say. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that a lot of people. I haven't met the people that are like. No, I actually anime. know people who are diehard anime fans. Who, like, I'll be like, yeah, I watch Dragon Ball Z. They like. I guess it, yeah. it is like one of the starter ones probably. It is, yeah, it's like, definitely an easy, go, not easy going, but like it's it's easier to get into. It's Americanized. Americanized. <laughs> That's probably what it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are 4Kids TV. Yeah. Yeah. You can literally not watch any episode of Dragon Ball Z and pick up Budokai Tenzaichi and be going crazy. Yeah, exactly. That's a fact. I think I'm the only one who doesn't watch it and I'm wearing the shirt. But I love the aesthetic, so. Yeah. Yeah. And I know they watch it, so I thought, well, no, damn, I didn't know you were going to expose yourself. You watch, yourself. like, Spirited or Well, yeah, like, I mean, Studio Ghibli, you know, yeah. just the TV shows I just can't get into. Would y'all consider uh, Avatar anime? No. Mm -mm. Really? It technically uh, is though. I feel paper, like it, it is. It, anime. it technically you know, is. But it's a like, cartoon. It is it's very cartoon esque. It's anime inspired. It was on Nick. So like, it's like, I don't think I would ever watch Avatar sub. Yeah, that's also. Do they have? <laughs> if, you, if you're thinking about <laughs> it that way, <laughs> you watch it in Avatar sub. It's in English, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it is. It came out in English. English first. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah it's. Sub it's very cartoony. Oh, I'm saying, like, that's I'm playing devil's advocate, saying if you watch it sub, would you consider that an anime? Like, it doesn't seem right, right? I get. What Are you saying, saying that if you just watch anything sub? So you're saying if you watch no. the Japanese version? And no, I'm subtitles. saying, would you rather watch it in sub? Well, I watch. I just like sub. Subs. I would have. Yeah. watched the, what was that? The Legend of Korra. Yeah. I would have watched that if it was sub. Yeah. If I started, like if it was in Japanese scene. and sub, you said. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I like the setting. I totally Korra. watched. I, I love that. Behind Korra. I like mm. the setting though, like the time frame. Yeah. I just there was just some aspects of it. I was like, nah. Yeah. yeah it's it's based. It's more or less an American anime. So yeah. like, yeah, it's an anime, but not like in the traditional sense, probably. Yeah. But it depends who you ask, I guess. <laughs> and you, you would probably get some heated responses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I love a good anime debate. I don't even watch, like. I've, I've I dabble here and there. I, mm. I only watch shows that people recommend. Yeah, I'm more like that. I, I dabble also. Yeah. So, do y'all have like like crazy like diehard F and P fans? Yeah, I mean the last Toe Ballroom show. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I mean, Go it's just on camera. I mean, right. panties get thrown, bras right. get thrown. I I that's that's <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> so what, do you what, say? what are like your favorite songs to perform? Oh, have y'all gotten a, how many performances have y'all had since dropping the project? Well, we've been performing it <laughs> before yeah, yeah. we dropped it. Yeah, yeah. We um, yeah, we've been playing that tape for a year, up to a year and a half at least before it came out. So. It was like by the time the project dropped, a lot of people knew the songs. Just yeah, I know about three of them. Yeah. Because I think so. I played a couple at Nelson's birthday party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. 
definitely appreciate you guys. <laughs> of course. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so what would you say are y'all favorites to perform so far? Trumpets. Trumpets are hard to lose. That's, that's sure. my favorite. Sure. Anything that, with energy. That, like that Nietzsche show, your encore, even Cassione, that one's stupid. It will even Cassione, Cassione is good. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a throwback with yeah. me and Eddie. T-shirt is my personal favorite to watch. <laughs> T-shirt is nuts. Um, I really like to perform uh, Hang It Up, mm. which is oh, yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, I drum on that song and the drumming on that song. And just the energy in general is super high super high energy and we do like a trap breakdown at the end yeah. which is like just so much fun so that's up there and and trumpets in honolulu too with that like drum and bass kind of yeah, section in the middle. Crazy. yeah i personally it's like crazy. mary jane because i like the way we dressed it up so. i was gonna say nobody said held me down that's my favorite <laughs> <laughs> that's, my favorite that's the fan that's favorite for sure is it yeah yeah i would say yeah, I remember we performed. <laughs> <laughs> we performed that at uh, the rec room. We had open for a niece. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> little kids and shit. <laughs> <laughs> we are not used to playing like, all ages shows. Yeah, yeah. it was like, it was like, like no cussing. Everybody repeat after me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I just get all of money, money and a real bad bitch <laughs> to hold me down. <laughs> Mommy, what's a bitch? They did it too. <laughs> with their badasses. How did y'all end up uh, opening for Anise? He's been going crazy lately. Yeah, so Anise is the homie. Um, I actually met him over Instagram a couple years ago now. Um, he found Most Days on Spotify, one of my songs. And he just said that he really liked the vibe. He just like said what's up initially. Just said that he fucked with the, the sound. Um, and then he was working on uh, the song Slip and he was looking for a producer to finish it he couldn't find anyone and like hit me up and mm -hmm. so I've been producing for him for the last couple of years and now he's met everyone and, mm -hmm. and kind of uh, we kind of like joined forces a little bit on that so um, yeah he's a, a good friend and collaborator so dope dope yeah man because when I seen when I seen y'all uh, working on some stuff I was like Cause I remember, I remember when I first heard him it was from you, like you posting them on IG and stuff. But then I saw the growth with the TikTok and everything else was like like four hundred thousand followers in like a couple months. I was like, oh yeah. shit! I was like, yeah, this is gotta keep. This is getting kind of crazy. So then y'all, you were you were playing bass for him? Yeah, so I played bass for him on tour and uh, free music party. We opened up in Buffalo and Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, which was really cool. How was that Pittsburgh show? It was dope. Yeah. Really nice stage. Really nice stage. Really nice, yeah. stage. nice sound. Yeah. That That's place had good chicken and waffles, too. The, the chicken and waffles were, <laughs> were hit. My, my hometown, my mom came, my dad came. It's worse. <laughs> so, so you from, you're from Pittsburgh. Yeah. What's the name? How, how do you feel like Buffalo is like, how Buffalo been treating you since you been? Great. Honestly, I, I love it here. Um, especially the music scene. I think Pittsburgh, with its music, is kind of lacking. Despite the, the people who, that have come out of there, but like, I don't know, there's not much of a hip hop scene there. It's more of like fuzz rock. Mm. Um, and each city has their little, you know, niche. niches, but yeah. yeah. Now that's, that's one thing I noticed, like I worked for this uh, machinery company and I would travel all over the country, over the world type stuff. And I, but my thing, every time I touched down in the city, I was like, okay, I have to find the local music scene just to see like what it's like. And that shit was not easy, like, to pick, to find, like, and I'm like, yo, Buffalo has something really unique that, like, we don't even realize, like, yeah. we, we have a lot of talent, a lot of art here that the world needs to hear, type shit. Uh, yeah, man, because what y'all doing and just, like, the diversity y'all bringing to Buffalo, it's much appreciated, much appreciated. Where are some places y'all say y'all want to, like, travel to when y'all really start touring? Like going on world tours Tokyo. or maybe a yeah, United States. Sure. Yeah, Tokyo. I want to. I want to go buy my Mark uh, Four Supra out yeah, there Tokyo and ship it back. So. What is that? Uh, car. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. One of the really when we cool. first started making music like Civil. I remember me and Eddie like had this drunk conversation, like on top of their old house, Headley, and we were like, um, we we're like, you know what? Like, it's like, man, like I want to go to Paris, man, like. And we just like that has been my like goal ever since. If we just play a show in Paris, that's like 
Yeah, make be everything crazy. just a Euro tour, like a yeah. Euro tour. Would be you see, crazy. I kill us some shit on a Euro tour. Oh man, they're gonna love us out there. Oh, sure. I don't know. What? The fools they had a hustle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Crepes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh. So let me see. Do y'all do y'all do y'all plan on doing like individual projects and stuff like that? Like, is it always just F and P or y'all gonna do little divisions of certain stuff? We got like a like a cinematic universe of music. Yeah. Free music party. <laughs> the Marvel Universe. Yeah. yeah. Really PCU. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is there's some lore, man. We we all kinda have collaboration projects like amongst each other, solo stuff that we've all been working on. So um, yeah, you know, I think we kind of think of ourselves as, as almost like a super group. Like someone like Wu Tang where they would have collaboration projects that would blow people's heads off, but mm -hmm also have individual projects that were like equally as legendary or like influential. So I think we kind of view ourselves that way because we all have unique visions and styles and um, artistic expressions. So like we definitely will make a point of bringing those out individually okay. as we go. So we kind of wanted to introduce ourselves yeah. as like a family basically, like as a group dynamic mm -hmm. and then as people get to know us, show the different flavors um, of each individual and like what they do. So. That's dope. That's dope. It reminds me of uh, <laughs> it reminds me of Black Hippie a little bit yeah. in the in the essence of like like no we like we're friends who came together and like I remember they had some they they didn't. I forgot, like, the genre, they didn't want to call it hip-hop. They called it, like, human music. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually, like, we heard that. We had a um, someone close to us, like, yo, this is like watching Black Hippie. Oh, like, yep. Uh-huh. On the come up, you know what I mean? And it's like, that's what, it, that's what it feels like to us, is, like, really trying to start our own movement, more or less, you know? Yeah. Something, like, carve out a lane for ourselves, rather than get in where you fit in. Like, we're fucking making room, you know what I mean? <laughs> like. <laughs> That's a fact. Shit, at least we got the Free Music Party group project, though. Never yeah. got the Black Hippie group project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And never will, probably. <laughs> Still make me cry on the inside. <laughs> uh, what what y'all got uh, playing next? They got Town Ballroom on the 27th? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there anything else y'all got in store? I know y'all been doing the, the, the run with the shows and stuff. You flew? You flew? The 28th. Yeah. How do you pronounce that? I think it's bow flow because it's kind of like you're saying buffalo, but you're not. Everybody says it differently. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. That's a fact. Y'all gonna be there performing at 3:45 or something. Whenever the sun is highest in the sky, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think it's four, is it four thirty? I think I think it's around there. It's three thirty. It's right after hot yoga. Oh, okay. oh it is. <laughs> no. Yeah. Did you look at that, or are you just going off top? No, it, I, it, I looked at that. Yeah, it was three right thirty. After hot yoga. After hot yoga. I, I know we are the first early, ones man. on that get stage. Get, there, get your yoga early. in, and then go to the hot yoga. I'll be there. Three. We um. It's great. You just got to keep an eye out. I feel like part of our strength is that we kind of leave a certain, we kind of leave people guessing at times where we like, we pop out with some crazy shit and kind of hibernate for a bit and like, just go back to our craft. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of what people, has made people curious is like, we're not like constantly out there, like putting our faces all over, the, like plastering it everywhere. We kind of we're a bit more low key, so we're, when we're doing something, you know it's gonna be crazy. You know it's gonna be yeah. like a whole experience. So. Yeah, I feel like y'all y'all very like word of mouth. Like, yeah, mm, we're old school friend, in a lot yeah, of ways. Yeah, a friend told a friend, and then they they love it. Look yeah, to three forty five, right after heal a lot earlier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> word. Uh, what stage? Uh, Queen City. Queen City. Queen City stage. Yeah. How many stages? I think it's only like three. I think it's really? three. three Queen City, right? Yeah. Queen City stage. 345? 345, right oh, after Hill yeah. Hakro Yoga. <laughs> and Town Ballroom um, with Esco and Pro Social on the 27th. That's going to be great. That's going to be fun. Yes. Yeah. I can't wait for that. Shout out to Esco and, and Pro Social and yeah. all the homies, man. And what time do you go on that Town Ballroom? So, yeah, doors are at 8. 
music will start at nine. Copy, copy. copy. Is there anything else you want to leave us with? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> that was the schedule. I mean, go stream 777 and uh, be on the lookout for what comes next because you never know with us. We still have merch available. Yeah, go buy some merch. Buy for sure, merch. buy some merch. Well, you can only get merch at shows right now. <laughs> Come to the show and buy the merch. Remember, it's the jackpot show. Don't split the tens. Don't go above an 18. If you've got a good hand, 21. Always bet it on red, no matter what. Um, let me see. What else can I say? Stream 777. Stream 777. Right Show it to your grandma, your aunts, They're your, gonna love your it. cousin, love it. I promise you, your, gonna love it. your <laughs> sisters, your brothers, the third cousin, whatever you Fourth want. Fourth cousin. Seven. Everybody. That goes that far. It's been a free music party summer. Free it's music been a free summer. music party summer. Keep your eyes peeled, man. That's a fact. Uh, do you plan like a political run? Oh, we talked about this. We did talk about this. Unequivocally, yes. That would be hard. Because I mean, they, if, you, if you run a candidate, right, like <laughs> to a certain degree, people have to take you seriously, like to a certain degree, right? So like if we ran, let's say, Enrique or Kevin, any of these guys for like House of Representatives, <laughs> it showed up to like the debate, which would be at like St. Joe's or something. Well, I need it, it to the council to meeting, like, so the so There would have to be people who would listen to what we have to say, and I yeah. think that would be so fire. I that think would be, it would be such a fire run, and then like 20 years from now, there would be like a political doc on Netflix, and be great. I don't think yeah. it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I don't see it not happening. And buttons yes. are in. We're gonna make buttons. I have a, hey. I'm running for office. I have a political science degree. We're gonna have people. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Best I, I, it yeah. doesn't help at all. But, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good though. I have a marketing degree and I do very little marketing. <laughs> so maybe I'll put that to use. Uh, definitely be like that. You got any questions, Kimo? Is there a Kimo? Everybody, yeah, but yeah, the rest yeah. of us are, yeah. yeah uh, east side for me and Eddie. East side for me as well. We're from North Buffalo. North Buffalo. Like for us to be. Yeah, I grew up like right on the Buffalo Kenton border, like on Kenmore Avenue, like right off of Kenmore in Kenton. So. I'm from Niagara Falls. That was the ass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Of course. The entire Buffalo in one. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's a fact. Yeah. yeah. What is y'all recording process like? It's so many of y'all. It's like, how do y'all Different. Do it? It's crazy. It, is, it, is it gets crazy. a little hectic. Um, <laughs> we do everything in-house. So, like, our, our plan from the jump was to get so good at everything that, like, we all had our hands in everything. So, like, we do all our own engineering, recording, mixing. We shoot our own promos. We do our own merch. Like, Basically, we all have our roles in the studio where we kind of like take turns engineering or like so like I'll usually start the production, they'll mm -hmm. start the vocals and then we're building those like simultaneously. Like as I'm working on the production, they're working on the production with me, they're working on the vocals and like they come together at the end and then we just Record it and that's it. Like that's mm. his. who 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 uh mix and master seven seven seven. So Steven and I uh, mixed it and Joe mastered it. That shit was, was mixed and mastered very very well. I was in thank you. Highly thank impressed. you. It's been a lot of trial and error and yeah. a lot of shitty mixes. <laughs> <laughs> you should have heard some of the earlier stuff. They are the best. I have not heard a sound as quality. I said sound as quality. I don't know how to talk today, <laughs> but. but no, I, like the quality that they produce is just, it's, you can't get anything like it. It's got to be crispy. crispy. I know Morrow knows drums got to hit drums gotta every go time. And for you, man, your drums <laughs> always hit. So I know you, that's a priority. Low end is like mm -hmm. everything. We want it to be colorful, poppy, warm mm -hmm. sound, like always. So appreciate that. Yeah, definitely achieved that. Work, because most people don't talk about the mix. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Shit, like, yeah. We're all about that. I got anything else I want to say before we wrap up? Come join the party. Yeah. yeah. Join the party. Yeah. All are welcome. Yeah. Appreciate y'all pulling up, man. 
Thanks for having us. Thanks for having coming you. next, for sure. For sure. We're definitely going to be at that show at the Tom Ball Room. That's right. Yeah, man. No label to pod. We out. Peace.